Hey listeners, you know we love Bollet's Customized Bowls, where we get to create our own combo of bold flavors with grains, veggies, and protein. Like my current favorite of steak au jus with Brussels sprouts on a bed of forbidden black rice. That sounds great, especially when it's smothered in my favorite creamy garlic sauce. Mmm, que rico. That does sound great. You know what else sounds great? Their strawberry chia seed pudding. Delicious. That too, but... Also, the fact they now have locations in Aventura and Fort Lauderdale, both offering wraps featuring signature spice blends, sauces, and marinades. Okay, wait, esperate. So our listeners can enjoy a fresh and customized bolet bowl or wrap in Broward? <laughs> Así mismo. They can experience bolet at various locations throughout Florida and even Georgia and Virginia. Meaning we can all be part of Bolay's mission to inspire bold living through the power of fresh food. And who doesn't want to live boldly? Exactly. So visit bolay.com today to find your nearest location or place an order for pickup. There's no day like today to enjoy fresh food to fuel your life. The holidays are back. It's like we just finished going trico tri and now it's time for sun giving, el ho ho ho. But that also means it's time to find the perfect gift for your dad, husband, brother, carajo, even for yourself. You know where this is going. That's right, get them the perfect jean. I absolutely swear by these jeans from bandit black to midnight blue to light blue ice, which is also ripped because as we know, the only thing better than comfort is edgy comfort. <laughs> as a Miami boy, I even have their jean shorts Spoke in Miami, we need quality shorts that are stylish and comfortable. Pero ish, you're saying. My boyfriend, abuelo, tío, doesn't need any jeans this holiday season. To that I say, you're wrong, because every man does need the perfect jean. Pero okay, if that is true, we still got you covered. Just in time for winter, the perfect jean now has extremely comfortable hoodies. Made using organic cotton, these hoodies are just as comfortable as the jeans. They're perfect for those chilly winters up north, or if you're visiting DJ's house, because as we know, he keeps the temperature at a reasonable setting of tundra. So it is the holidays, which means we've got a gift for you. Use code PERO20 at theperfectgene.nyc for 20% off your order. Así mismo, PERO20 gets you 20% off the jeans, the hoodies, everything. Jeans and hoodies sounds like two great items to open under the tree to us. So this holiday, your khakis and get the perfect gift from the perfect gene. And don't forget to use code BETO20 for 20% off your order. Hey everyone, this is DJ. And this is Ish. And this is Season, season five, 5 of Pero Let, Let Me Tell You. drink a lot of water after oh it's like it does a thing it, yeah, it, yeah your, your mouth goes to another place that's kind of what i'm doing right now because i have icebreakers and you're and drinking have, you water know, ice cold so your mouth is just a tundra right now yeah yeah it matches my house it, it, well there you go yes Whoa. and everybody Whoa. welcome to episode <laughs> 232 of pero let me tell yeah, you it's only two more episodes this year and that's it's for season five yeah where did the year go oh it just went behind us <laughs> well, if I went forward to it, we'd be doing some time traveling or some shit like that. We should, we should. Um, you know that the my dad got surgery this weekend. Thank God he's fine. Yes. And you know when I was in the hospital with him, there was a part of the hospital that I stepped in that was like, like you could notice a temperature drop. It was you, too cold even for you. Yes, that I was like, oh my god. I was so like, now you understand. I was like, this is what I feel when when people come to my house. Actually, speaking of which, do you need a throw? I do not. I do not. I'm good right now. Good yes, right now. yes, I'm good You're for good. now. The Thank night you. is the, 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 the day is early. The day is young. Yes, as they say. So I'm like, yeah, this is what people feel when they come to my house. Anyway, um, I can't believe the year is almost over. I know. I know. I know we say this every year. I'm sure that if you look at our penultimate <laughs> episode last year, we say the same the thing. The same exact thing. The same exact thing. But the only difference is that this year, if you're listening to this on Friday, December 2nd, is we're going to be at Croqueta Palooza, which, you know, we're, we didn't have Bim Bam Pollo the last couple of episodes so right. that's a couple of years sorry so yeah we're gonna be actually featuring this is our first like big event where we're featuring 
Well, yeah. I mean, our, I feel our big event was 305 Day this year. True, but um, uh, but I mean, but we're featuring. We're featured. We're featuring. We're featuring. Yes, 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 yes. And we have a lot of surprises next year for Bean Bump Boyo yes, for those we of do. us who follow us. Yes, yes, And we if do. you're local and you haven't followed us or gone to one of our pop-ups, what, what are, are you waiting, waiting for? for? <laughs> that was like a great Jennifer Love Hewitt in stereo there. That's not, that's not where I was going with that. <laughs> What are you waiting for? Oh, I was thinking, I know what you did last summer. Or what you waiting, what you waiting <laughs> for? Tick, tick tock, tick tock. Um, uh, she doesn't age. Gwen Stefani? Eh, they were either. Um, yes and no. I think she looks great, but you can tell. Right, but what I mean is there's like. There's been some work done there. Right. But, but she she still looks good. Right. Like for her, for her age, she still looks like, if you put her next to a picture of herself from Tragic Kingdom, it's not, it's not off. Yeah, man, no doubt. I have to tell you, no doubt was like so cool. They really were when they they, they came out in our in our high school years. For some of you, they may have come out before you were born. That's true. Um, but they came out in our high school years, and like she was the epitome of cool. She really was. Like she, it was. I, I think that if she wouldn't have looked the way she did. Maybe they wouldn't have been as popular as. They I mean, were. she she was the the front woman, you know, yeah. for for a reason. Yeah, yeah, and it's not even because she's very pretty, but the, she had a very unique. Well, she still does a very unique style. Yeah, and she's charismatic. Yeah. And don't speak is one of the best songs ever. It is. You know that what is I, such a great song. You know what I always think of when I think of Tragic Kingdom. What? So it came out our senior year. Yeah. And I remember one time I had to go to our journalism teacher's uh, trunk to get something. Yeah. And she had the CD in the trunk. And so every time I see the cover of Tragic Kingdom, I always think of of, uh, of Lisette's trunk. Oh, oh. As one does. <laughs> As one does. I mean, it's such a weird memory, but it always just, boom, it instantly takes me back. It's funny because when we went to our high school reunion that they did like a mixed CD, yeah. I thought they have to put uh, Don't Speak. Yeah. And they did. They did. And I remember they had Wannabe. <laughs> In the well, mixed CD. I mean, of course. But you know what's funny? When I think of the Spice Girls, I don't think of us in high school. No, I think I think college, yeah. Yeah. Even though they technically did come out when we were... In 97. So yeah, in yeah. high school. But um, but I think of, I, I don't think about them that in way. high school. Um, speaking of music... It does make the people come together. I get them, Isa, with all these Spotify... The wrapped? Oh. I like them. Uh-huh. I like them because it helps me. Look, as I said, nowadays it's hard enough to discover new music. So if there's somebody out there who I... Th- Do you have one? I do, but I didn't post mine. Do, what do? You, what are they? Oh, I don't even remember. Can you get them? I can Let live me, on air. I can. Let's I have an see. equivalent of so in, in app in uh, it, iTunes. I, oh, they do an equivalent. Yeah. Oh, I'm I didn't know that. Post it. I mean, I rather talk about it than post it. Okay, so let's see. Let's see what was on my wrapped. Let's see. Wrapped, 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 wrapped. Spotify wrapped. Mine, mine is so. <laughs> mine is so not. <laughs> Surprising. Okay, what is it, Mariah and Demi? No. Okay, so number ten, take my breath by the weekend. Number nine, out of time by the weekend. Number eight, sacrifice by the weekend. Number seven, uh, who by love versus uh, featuring BTS. Number six, never gonna give you up. Oh, okay. <laughs> number four, number five, body say by Demi Lovato. Number six, twenty nine by Demi Lovato. Number, th- number, what, what number was I in? Four. Number three, <clears throat> Africa by Toto. <laughs> not, not surprising. Yeah. Not surprising. Number two, um, How Do I Make You Love Me by The Weeknd. And number one, um, Is There Someone Else by The Weeknd. Okay. So in other words. It's a very you, very, very you. <laughs> Mariah isn't even in my top 20. Not even Demi? Demi, no, Demi was in my top 10. Oh, okay. But Mariah's not. Actually, Mariah's not even in my top 50. <laughs> oh, well, okay, no, well, underneath uh, the stars. Is, okay, what about you? Mine is very eclectic. So, like, my top song was All the King's Men by Miles Fisher. Apparently, I played that 17 times. Um, Let's see, they're putting, this is so, like, it's, the thing is that when I look at it on Spotify, it's a little, it's a whole little video thing, so it's going to take a minute. Um, I got a home. My top artists, let's see. Sorry. My top artists were um, Sammy Ariaga, and then also Cat Graham, Sam Sparrow, Eminem, and the cast of Smash. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of eclectic. Then, da, 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 this year you had layers like an onion. Oh, dang, nabbit, worse. Okay, here's my year squeezed onto a page. Gimme, gimme, gimme. 
So yeah, um, all the King's Men. Uh, yeah, your vibe by Sam Sparrow. The way. Yeah. So it, it was very eclectic. It was very odd. I think a lot of it also was just because I literally just sometimes let things play in the background. Mm-hmm. So it just goes over and over and over on repeat. <laughs> so my... Like, I wasn't very curated this year with my Spotify in general. So my um, top artists are, no surprise, The Weeknd. Number two, Demi Lovato. Number three, Maluma. Okay. Uh, number four... Um, Jojo, this isn't right. I did listen to Jojo. <laughs> that a lot. actually does sound right for you this year. No, I, I did listen. When I mean Jojo, I mean the singer back from the early two thousand. Don't 2000s. lie, you know it's Siwa. Not that <laughs> abomination. Um, you know, you put on your ribbons and you listen to Jojo Siwa. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Braxton, Frank Ocean. I listened to a lot of Frank Ocean this year. Um, yeah, I, but I feel like you did talk to me a lot about JoJo this year. Yeah, so it doesn't JoJo su- had an album. Right, so it doesn't <laughs> surprise me that she's on your top. Right. Oh, well. I'm not posting this shit, so there you go. <laughs> you get here, here it's on. an exclusive. It's an exclusive. So, on you know, let me tell the, you. you. Okay, okay, taking it back. Now back to the songs. Because iTunes gives me the top 100. My number 56, the 56th mm-hmm. song I, I listened to the most this year was Bailamos by Enrique Iglesias. Really? I freaking love that song. Okay, but that's just bizarre. No shame. I love oh, that song. Oh, I'm not song. saying you I should be, it, but I'm just it, saying it's it. it's bizarre. Number. You know what I will I will bring up, not the rapped, but there was this also there was this thing this year where I don't know if you saw it on your Instagram that people Number were 74 She's No You by Jesse McCartney. <laughs> I love that song. I like song. that song. <laughs> well, this year, I don't know if you saw it on people's um posts, but there was apparently some type of app. I I did it where they would take your Spotify playlist and they would create like a music festival. Uh-huh. And so, oh, I saw that. Okay, okay. Funny story. So mine would have been a in very interesting music festival. I saw that from some random. Person. I was like, oh wow. I was like, where is this? I'm like, music tremendo festival. festival. Yeah, it was something like I don't know, Georgia, Florida line with like above and beyond, and like something. You want to hear mine? What? All right. Day one of my music festival. The headliner is Sammy Ariaga, followed by Marta Sanchez, Eminem, Robbie Williams, The Party, The Shapeshifters, The Young Professionals, Kylie Minogue, Years and Years, Madonna, and Ed Sheeran. That's on day one. Of the, that's day one. In the main stage. That's, that's day one. Day two is Sam Sparrow, Melanie C., Darius, Pia Zadora. Darius? Darius. Pia Zadora, okay. <laughs> because I listen to When the Rain Begins to Fall Off. Of course. Will Young, Take That, Debbie Gibson, Gloria Estefan, Sophie Tucker, Hilary Duff, Paula Abdul, and Paulina Rubio. Wow, that's a good lineup. Day three is Cat Graham, Panic at the Disco, Steps, Leona Lewis, Ronan Keating, Caswell, Taylor Dane, Bright Light, Bright Light, Boy Pablo, Seatbelts, Domino Saints, and Christina Aguilera. Wow, <laughs> what seatbelts? It's um, it's this Japanese group that they did all the music for an anime cowboy bebop. Oh, well, uh, why did I even ask? So, listeners, <laughs> that would be a great festival. What's on your list? <laughs> well, we're gonna see it anyway. Yeah, but it's so funny because like whenever those lists came out this week, yeah, like that's why I posted on my Instagram because it was like one person after another after another. Yeah, after you know another. when it comes and out, and then yeah. I was like, okay, apparently I may be the only person on earth who doesn't, doesn't have Spotify. Spotify. So you, you know, it's funny that. Somebody that we know um, in common was like, um, oh, you know, why aren't you on Spotify? And I go, well, I'm actually on sort of on iTunes because or now it's Apple Music yeah. because I've had it forever. And he's like, oh, but it's so fun to do your playlist. And I'm like, dude, I have over 4,000 CDs and I painstakingly uploaded every single one of those CDs, every single maxi single, every oh, single yeah, maxi like singles. European import CD I put up on the cloud. Dude, that is my playlist. That is true. <laughs> that is true. Because you know what I do? I have I have them all on the cloud. Right. All those right, songs. Right, right, right. It's 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 like close to forty thousand songs. Jesus. I just put random. Well, yeah, and it's your whole collection, so you'll be yeah. fine. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. That is my And then you playlist. just hit next. You just hit next if you don't want to hear that song. Yeah. That's it. You're fine. You're good. If I'm not feeling the 12-minute fan- version of Fantasy by Mariah, the right. whatever remix, I'll just move on to like, there's I don't an, know. There's another option. Tamiya. Tamiya. <laughs> that is definitely a moving on from. Yeah. 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 Oh, she's so good. 
Cheers. I am so in. No, but we like very different Tamiyas. Yes, we do, but it's still Tamiya. Right, because I like Tamiya, R&B, Tamiya. You like Stranger in My House, Thunderpuss Remix. Yes, I do. You know. Listen, if I can't be on a platform shirtless, I why bother? Okay. <laughs> Of course. You know, as one does. As one does. As one does. So, I wanted to bring up today, I don't know if you heard about this, but you know, we're, we're, we're Miami-based podcasts, mm -hmm. and you know, your office is in that magical place of Hialeah. Yeah, that's Ciudad que Progresa. Now, have you heard about, um, where's her name, Amanda Ramirez of Hialeah? Refresh my memory. Well, Amanda Ramirez of Hialeah has filed a proposed $5 million class action lawsuit against the Kraft Heinz Food Company, mm -hmm. alleging the food's producer, Velveeta Shells and Cheese, takes longer than advertised to prepare, according to court documents. Are you serious? I am dead serious. Oh, that's awesome. That's amazing. I am dead serious. Attorneys uh, for her filed the lawsuit on November 18th, and it claims that the packaging on the microwavable single-serve cup of mac and cheese says it will be ready in three and a half minutes, which is false and misleading because the product's instructions say to microwave the cup for three and a half minutes, but her attorneys argue this number doesn't account for the other four steps required to prepare the pasta, which is removing the lid and sauce pouch, adding water, microwaving, and stirring. Okay. The additional steps mean it's impossible for the mac and cheese to be ready in just three and a half minutes, according to the complaint. Okay. So, <laughs> here's the thing. <laughs> um, I, I just know that it's a, girl, a lady from Hialeah. Like, that's my favorite. Any lawsuit that you file, any lawsuit, hmm. you have to prove damages. Right. Like, have have like damages. How did they get to that $5 million? You have to, you have to, you have, to have damages. Right. So, what are your damages? Like, right. Even a class action like this, right? Yeah. What... This is a class action. Well, they said it's a, they filed it as a class action. It, it's hold on, let me let me bring it up again because I just I shut my my phone down. One second, one second. It's a proposed. She she has filed a proposed five million dollar class action lawsuit. This is why attorneys have bad reputations. <laughs> There's no. What are the damages? Like I want to know what the damages are. I don't know. I I would love to know how they got to that number. How much mac and cheese but, did this but, woman but buy? Again, what are the damages? Because right. what is the basis? Because you, you know, that's sort of. I'll never forget. You had that. never heard of this. I had it. I'll never forget that one one time. The lawsuit alleges. Sorry, I'm trying to find kind of the answer to your question. See if it's here. Um, the lawsuit alleges that Kraft is unfairly profiting off of false advertising on the cups, especially because customers trust a well-known brand to be honest with them. Um, Ramirez's lawyers argue that the company sells the product at a, quote, substantial price premium, quote, end quote, while using its, uh, quote, unquote, misleading marketing of, quote, unquote, ready in three and a half minutes, which instantly catches the eye of all reasonable consumers. Customers are paying more than they otherwise would because of the three and a half minutes claim the lawsuit alleges. Uh, what are the comparables? In addition, uh, uh, Ramirez is, quote unquote, like many consumers who seek to stretch their money as far as possible when buying groceries, a complaint states. But because of the time claim, she paid more for the product than she would have paid and would have not purchased it or paid less had she known the truth. In addition to the $5 million in damages, the plaintiff also seeks punitive damages from Kraft Heinz Foods Company and asks the company be ordered to cease its deceptive advertising as well as be made to engage in a corrective advertising campaign according to court documents. She's cute. Punitive damages. Do you know how hard it is? To what is punitive, punitive exactly? Punitive, punitive is that we punitive is that your behavior was so egregious that you like purposely that, that the court sets punitive damages to like further um in, in whatever the loss like if is. you like if you knew that your car purposely blew up and you still set it out, out into the world well n not even that that your your whatever it is that the lawsuit is punitive damages is that you are further being you're so egregious your behavior or w whatever it is that the allegation is mm -hmm. that the court puts extra fines if you will or extra to your judgment because of how ba what a bad actor you were. Obviously, basically, you just think you didn't give a fuck. Punitive damages involves intent. Okay. It involves recklessness. Okay. It involves notice. I mean, it, it's it's a lot. Okay. To to put, but basically, you you generally have punitive damages in like, for example, mm -hmm. contamination cases mm -hmm. where um, 
they knew a product was contaminated or a product could cause cancer. Okay, so they like, knew it. They, they, knew they it. just they didn't knew care. It. And they just continued to do it and do okay, it and do okay. it. Okay, okay. Like cigarettes. One could argue. One could argue because it causes cancer. I, so. I don't know if at one time when the original like lawsuits against like tobacco manufacturers included punitive damages, but to get punitive damages, it, it's a very high threshold. Mm -hmm. It is possible, and it does happen. Right. But it's a very high threshold. Right. The right? onus is on you. Um, again, I I still don't see what the damages are because what is the alternative? Do they have five minute mac and cheese at is cheaper well my thing is and, and again i'm pulling from the article according to the article it says the product's instructions say to microwave the cup for three and a half minutes but then her attorneys are arguing that that number doesn't account for the other four steps but the thing is that depending on how it's phrased if it says microwave for three and a half minutes they're not talking about the other steps they are they are very being very specific mm -hmm. in the amount of time of that action right because it says ready in three and a half minutes define ready mm -hmm. I, I would I would assume, but there's again this article says the and I don't have one in front of me. It says the product's instructions say to microwave the cup for three and a half minutes. I will say this: number one, I don't know how they got to that five million dollar number. But aside from that, at what point did this woman decide? You know, well, but this the, is I I want to sue because there's pe there's people that are professional plaintiffs that that's what mm. they go out doing. They're professional plaintiffs. And look, there's there's a lot of lawsuits. Because it, it would never dawn on me. There's a lot of lawsuits that the general public, when they hear about them, they're like, oh my God, that's bullshit. You know, well, the most the common Mac the one, McDonald's the one? The McDonald's one is the one that comes to mind. Yeah, which I think we and talked about And that's what here. I thought about the McDonald's one before I went to law school. Right. When I was in law school in torts, we studied the McDonald's case. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you that it really changed my mind. Because that woman, she got her burns... Mm -hmm. It disfigured her legs right. and her like, you it was know, like third degree, era. right? Yes, yeah. like she needed skin grafts and everything. Yeah. And the thing was that it's not even that the coffee was hot. The coffee was like tw it was like boiling hot. Right, it was and beyond McDonald's. And the reason why McDonald's did that was because the hotter the temperature you keep the coffee, the fresher it is. It's right, it's fresher or longer. it tastes fresher longer. Right, right, right. So they were doing it to maximize their profit. So theoretically, right. that could be punitive. Theoretically, I believe there were punitive damages in that because case. that that would be an instance where they know this is yeah um, scalding and. They had notice of this because there were other incidents where people had gotten burned. It's just that they didn't sue them. Oh, right? okay, okay, okay. Or, or if they sued them, it, they got settled out of court. It got wasn't. It. it didn't the, blow the, up. The case didn't make it all the way to to the jury mm -hmm. to a jury verdict. Right. Like this one to did, the public. Yeah. Right. So one th when I studied and read that case and we analyzed it in school, I was like, okay, I get it. I get it. Right. Because it's not that, oh, well, yeah, hot coffee. Of course you're going to get burned. No. It's that the coffee was so hot that it's – it's. Be, I mean, just think about how hot that coffee was right. in order yeah, for yeah. it to cause those burns. And for a jury of your peers to be like, oh, yeah, uh, this no, is no. too much. No, no. Yeah, that's yeah, too much. Yeah, yeah that's right? the line. Yeah. So um, – it, it, it depends, you know, th that's why it depends. But all this, from what you're reading, is like, okay, th this yeah. is a professional plaintiff. Yeah, and I mean, again, it just it just seems to me like such a bizarre thing. Like, how do you? I know que uno porque you know I'm not that type of person. I'm not a a uh, punitive person. I'm not, I'm not one of these people who goes around suing people for everything. But how, like, at what point do you say, you know, this did not take me three and a half minutes. This took me four minutes. Right. Like. How you do you, know, how do you, you get start, there? You start rolling. You start. It snowballs. You or you. You know. Maybe one day you start thinking. Oh, you know. This is not. It takes me six minutes. You know. The whole from from closing Opening, the microwave yeah. door to eating it. Right, it takes right. me seven minutes or whatever. Right. And this is not whether you know. You you start getting snowball. Mm -hmm. And you know. And at the end of the day, you know. It, it what happens is a lot. A lot of people that sue or want to sue or think they could sue. They have a little bit of of um you must make me whole mentality um I, I, I was gonna say i have an example of that early on in my practice i had a a case where this guy was in his car and in front of him was this huge conglomerate uh here in florida that was um carrying a huge wooden like light pole mm -hmm. right 
uh, huge wooden poles. Oh, okay, right? okay. This was like a scene of Final Destination. Oh shit! Okay, and it, they had it, they were non-compliance and everything. They didn't have it was a wide load. They didn't have that car behind that mm, says wide yeah, load. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't it, properly uh, strapped in. Properly yeah. strapped in. Well, it, it again exactly like Final Destination. Yeesh. The log came undone, <gasps> and it went right through the car. Al tipo no le pasó nada. De milagro. Pero nada. He didn't even get the scratch. Wow. Not a scratch. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but you can, you, you, you're you going to get your car repaid. For, right, for damages. Right, right, right. For, for damages. But you're not going to get millions of dollars. You were not damaged. You could have been. And there's a major negligence here by this right, right, right. company. Right? There's They were extremely negligent. Right. Right? But what makes your case valuable is not the is not their negligence. It's your damages. Because nothing happened to you. Nothing happened to him. So, right. so what was he going to sue for in physical damages? Now, you could do other things like um, negligent infliction of emotional distress, like things like that. But in terms of your bodily damage, like you didn't have any damage. So, right. Be thankful. Yeah. Be thankful. So, <laughs> oh, I'm glad it came out from Hialeah. She probably bought that at Sedanos. <laughs> She probably went to the yeah. She again. I I don't even know how long it takes to make these things, much less it, enough to file un sou. File un sou. File un sou. Oh my god! Speaking of Sedanos, there's this couple that came on 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 Instagram that they're 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 funny, right? They're supposedly comedians, and they had they did a reel on Instagram where, um. They were allegedly at the Walmart, but the Walmart supermarket. Okay, okay. Right? And apparently somebody quit, and she did it on, like, the speaker. Like they caught her. On the intercom. And she's like, you know what? This is my, I'm quitting because y'all, you know, you motherfuckers, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, this place sucks and whatever. Like, she gave she, her whole resignation on the whole. The loudspeaker. S- loudspeaker of allegedly the walmart so in the real they you see that the two of them Mm -hmm. and and their reaction to when she was doing this okay because it was supposed to be like a real-time reaction right and they were and and she clearly says i'm quitting walmart and in their caption they're like i'm you know we were at walmart and this happened happened. okay okay right what they did not expect was the moment i saw the video i'm like this is not a walmart because you could see hanging from the ceiling of the store the thing the aisle number with the you know the products right, in right, each right. aisle and i'm like that's Publix. <laughs> i know the hanging aisle numbers from Publix. Uh, there are a few things you are more familiar with and that is Publix. <laughs> and then they people people were like that's, that's Publix. Not, right, that's right. walmart and and then they were like Oh, it is Walmart. Walmart, the neighborhood, whatever, yeah, supermarkets, yeah, right, yeah. their color is green. And I'm like, dude, that's green, but this is Publix green. Yeah, because like, I will so, say, I've been to the Walmart Super. There's, it's, they're, it's, they're, it's like a bright green. It's like a bright green. Yeah, it's like yeah, a like a right. neon. It's not Publix green. It's, it's not. Like, it, who are you fooling? Yeah, Publix green is almost like a primary color green. Go give that story to people who shop at Kroger in the Midwest. <laughs> Don't give that to people from the Southeast United States that shop at Publix. We will call you on your bullshit. Yeah. Now, I wish I could find the video now so you could see it. But it's like, that ain't Publix. Like, wh- no. who do you... I mean, wh- who do you think you're fooling? Not us. <laughs> who do you think you are? Uh, some kind of superstar. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Everybody knows the holidays can be a time of great joy and togetherness with the food, parties, and family. But they can also be a time that causes us to feel anxiety, stress, or even depression. And let's face it, having your tia tell you que cambies la cara during dinner doesn't exactly help. What you need, and maybe your tia también, is a gift to yourself. The ability to speak with a professional about your experiences. Enter BetterHelp. A customized online therapy provider BetterHelp offers therapy options that align with your time via phone, video text, or even live chat sessions with a certified therapist. BetterHelp's customized approach matches you with a therapist in under 48 hours based on your needs and creating the opportunity to help you better understand yourself. And as a special offer for Pero Let Me Tell You listeners, you can get 10% off your first month of professional therapy at betterhelp.com pero. 
It's already more affordable than in-person therapy, and now you can save on your first month. There's even a gifting option if you'd like to help someone you care about understand the benefits of therapy in their life. We should all have a happy holiday season, and BetterHelp has helped millions take the first step in that path. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash pero. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this podcast and this episode. I don't know. You just, you look like you were taking a breath there. No. I wanted to make sure you're okay. I was drinking water. Oh, because you've been like very, you've been very tired lately. Uh-huh. So I wanted to make sure. So I I saw this story, um, and I I thought it was interesting because I think it's something that that we have talked about here before. So there recently, I don't know if it's actually happened already, going to be a a speaking engagement at Books and Books in Coral Gables mm-hmm. with Professor Susan Ava Eckstein. Because she is the author of a book called Cuban Privilege. Oh my god, the whole thing at FIU this week. <laughs> oh, okay, so you have heard about it. I heard about the FIU thing. Okay. So basically she wrote this book where it's you know, it examines all the advantages that immigration law has granted Cubans who came to the US. And I think I mean you and I have gone over this mm-hmm. ad nauseum on here. But what I thought was interesting is that there was one of the new commissioners, newly elected commissioners, um, hey, Kevin, Kev- Kevin Cabrera, Cabrera, yeah, Cabrera, Cabrera, who you know was calling her out and saying that it was you know her, the, having he, they shouldn't have her speak and that it's hate filled and anti Cuban and blah 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 blah. Fine, whatever. You have your opinions, that's great. But what I thought was interesting is as I was going through the article, he said that he has based <laughs> his statement on excerpts of Cuban privilege and a brief video clip of an Eckstein speech, but he has not read her book. And my, 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 my whole position on that was like, you know, this is why things happen like they do nowadays. Because you can't be bothered. Maybe you read the book and you still feel the same way, right? Like, But, oh, I read three sentences and now I have a fully formed opinion that I want to call for, you know, action. Mm-hmm. You're basing this on three bullet points. Right. But that's everything. that's that's so wrong. But the fact that you admit it, you know what I mean? Like you're a commissioner and you're being like, yeah, I didn't read it. I just heard somebody say that it was you know, basically you're saying. How much do you want to talk about this topic? I mean, I have a lot of opinions about this topic. I'm sure you have opinions. And that's why I brought it up, because that's what we do. I mean, it's our show. Uh, we only have about an hour and change. Right. So, you know, <laughs> keep that in mind. So but that was, that was but that was the sticking point I, for I, me. I, I, I've known who she is for quite some time. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And she talks about privilege, specifically about Cuban, about Cuban privilege. Now, I will tell you my... Do we know why she... Well, she just, she talks about these type of things. Oh, she's, okay, okay. She, in general. Right, in general. Okay. She's a professor. Um, she's a scholar. I think she, she does these type of, um, like, immigra- like, history of immigration and okay. things like that. Right. Okay. What she says is not untrue. <laughs> She's not. Right. My only problem with it is that I I don't think she should be the one making that statement. I think that those are statements that should be, come from within the Cuban community. Okay. Right? All right. Right? Because I think, you know, I, I, I yeah. you have to be very careful the space that you fill. Mm-hmm. You know, that's something I, I, I we've said that We've here. said that many times, yeah. You, you know, we, we may be... Um, we may be... Mm. B- b- Pro, pro this, this, pro that. Pro that. Yeah. But if, but at the end of the day, you know, like for example, I mean, we've talked about this a bunch, right. a bunch of times. You know, race issues. I will go and be in the trenches with you and fight right. every day with you. But I can't speak but to your I, experience. Right. I don't know what it is like to be a black man in America. Right. So therefore, I should not be speaking about what, what it, it is, is to like be a, to be right. a black man in right. America. Right. 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 <laughs> right. Because. There's plenty of black men who want to fill that space. Rightfully so. And give that narrative. Right. Right? So why should somebody who's not black be the one giving that narrative? Yeah. Again, she, I will be in the trenches with you. Right. But, right. but so, that. So she, her, her quote here when, when asked was, it's a book that documents the unique entitlements Cubans have gotten over the years. I don't hold it against them. I say the U.S. should give more equity and equality to other immigrants, not to take rights away from Cubans. No. That's what she. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, that, but right. That, that's so, her. That's so, her stance. So, again. So her stance. Again, having so, having so, not read the so, book. Having so, not read the book. So this week when this came out, mm-hmm. this is why the problems in Cuba. This is why there's such a drift among the Cuban community, right? And I imagine there's similar drifts among all communities mm-hmm. that there's people that. But again, this see, is what we can speak to. See things one way and right. others another way. 
Um, this is why there's not conformity among the, the Cuban community because everybody see things very differently, including us, right? Because the moment that this speech came out or they said that she was going to have the speech at FIU, people were up in arms. Right. Oh, because we've worked so hard for what we have, you know, and we came from a communist government where everything, you know, was terrible. Well, nobody's saying that you didn't. Nobody right. is saying that you did not live through hell in Cuba. Right. Nobody is saying that, you, haven't worked that hard. you didn't work hard. Nobody is saying that you were given you know, you were given things. Nobody right. is saying that. Right. You have worked hard. And that's why the Cuban community has been one of the most successful yeah. immigrant communities in the history of the United yeah. States. We went up right. uh, one socioeconomic level within a generation. Right. Right. Nobody is taking that away. Mm -hmm. Nobody is saying that's not true. Right. But the moment that you have the Cuban Adjustment mm -hmm. Act, which was passed by a Democrat and a Democratic uh, Congress, just mm -hmm. a little FYI. Um, <laughs> when you have that type of law that gives asylum, right. automatic asylum to Cubans that no other country in the world, not even people escaping genocide, right. right, have automatic asylum in the U.S. Now, if you're escaping genocide, you have to apply for asylum and you probably will get You'll it. You'll probably get it right? before somebody else. Humans yeah. get it automatically. Right. Regardless. Right? right. That is a privilege. Right. That is a privilege. And 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 if and if you if you don't see that it's a privilege and you know what? You know what? And and it's I'm not even saying that it's not deserving because Cubans did go through a lot. Right. Right? Especially Again, we're not saying they shouldn't have it. Right. Especially the, you know those first waves of yeah. people that were escaping the regime and the dictatorship. Right, mm -hmm. they did go through a lot, and so nobody's saying that maybe they should they they shouldn't have been given you know special treatment or be helped out right. with their immigration status. Right, right, right. But they were, and we had we were right? right, and and no other country <laughs> because what, what what was the case with immigration policy until very recently? You had a boat of Cubans and you had a boat of Haitians. Yeah, the boat of Cubans came in. Wet foot, dry foot. The that's US. it. Yep. The Haitians were turned right back around. Is that fair? Right. Like let's 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 look at it on an equal playing field. Right. Is that fair? No, it's not. No, it's not. And Haitians may not have communism, but Haiti <sighs> is the poorest country in the Jesus, Western Hemisphere. Yeah. Right. That okay, living, y cada vez que hay un natural disaster, living los in Haiti is hell on earth. Right. So they may not have a communist government, but they're not escaping they're the not utopia. Thriving. Yeah, they're not right? thriving. Yeah, they're not escaping. You know, the Switzerland, right? Yeah, right. So that's a good parallel of of the 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 privileges that Cubans have had, and what happens when you have that privilege. A momento that yeah, you're in a country, you're in the United States, and you're automatically a a well a, a resident. Right. You're, already, you're you're allowed to work. You're not undocumented. You can work. So you now have one step ahead from other immigrants right, right. right who maybe don't have a visa or don't have right. asylum or have to work under the table because of their legal status right. right so you now and again it's not saying you're not working hard because that, that's the that's the problem when you talk about these issues within people in the cuban community oh because you're a communist because you know you're okay with that no you're not no nobody's okay with that right, right. but you do have privileges now my problem with her speech is that I don't necessarily think that a white woman from up north is the best vehicle to make that argument in Miami. 100%. Right? 100%. You know, the, again, the same example I gave you. You just gave you right know, now, yeah. You know, I'm not the person to go speak on the reality. The black experience. Online, the black experience. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Um, as much as we may be all, you know, be in that, yeah. we're we're not. So I think that she is not the person to do that, especially in, in Miami, here. right, right, at FIU, right. right, in the heart of Westchester. Right. Yeah. No, I'm mean, a bunch of people here. You know, oh, eh, 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 you know, they're laughing at our hard work. Y que nosotros no fuimos de, de la dictadura, and I'm like, but nobody's saying that you didn't. Right. So, yeah, I heard I was all about that this week. I oh, yeah. can't even imagine como debe haber estado Radio Mambi. Oh, that still hasn't changed over, right? No. It, it is Radio Mambi that was, that's going to become Radio the... Mambi. No, no, no. ¿Cuál es el que... Radio Mambi? Is the one that's going to become... Yes, but it still La, hasn't. What is it? Latino Radio or something like that? But it like still that? hasn't. Oh, okay, okay. I think it was just approved for that. Right, but, but it still hasn't. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 
fine, fine. Yeah, again, haven't read the woman's book, but I can't imagine that she's just, you know, railing against, uh, you know, Cubans one way or the other, so. Well, look, and if she said something that is inflammatory or is... Um, offensive. Offensive or just facts not correct. Right. Then she should be called out on it. Oh, absolutely. But to say that Cubans don't have privileges... Hasta el otro día. Well, they still do. Right. They still do because remember the only thing that's that was true. the only thing that was taken out was a wet foot, dry foot policy. That's true. That's true. Right. When a Cuban applies for a, asylum, they're gonna get it. They just have to apply. They have to apply. Right. Right. right? right? Whereas before, um, they uh, it, it, it was well the moment that you step foot in the U.S., it's automatic. Like now they have to apply and they're gonna get it. Right. Right. And technically Cubans can be deported, but most of them are not. It takes a lot. Right. So they still have privileges. Right. right? right, right. Thanks to the Cuban Adjustment Act, which was passed by a Democrat. But go right. ahead. <laughs> uh, well, you know who, who may not be having a lot of privileges lately? You. Mr. West. Well, ye. Ye, yay, Kanye West. <laughs> I can't. I I I just don't even know anymore. I can't. Like you, you, you know what bothers me so much about all like this. Like he even made Alex Jones feel uncomfortable. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying anything I haven't said before, and that a lot of people feel this way. Kanye West really is one of the greatest rappers of all time, and I love Kanye West. And I have to tell you that. It just it's hits differently now. <laughs> okay, music, but but in a, in a bad way. <laughs> in a bad way, it just hits differently now, and he's done. Aside from all the comments that he's made, just for let's talk about his musical legacy, right, right, which right. he worked for. I mean, yeah, know? he earned it. He, he earned it. Yeah, yeah. It's like how it's like how fast can you burn that legacy, <laughs> right? And. You know that that comment he did. So like, for hold, you, hold for my you listeners who haven't heard, Kanye West uh, or Yee was on Alex Jones this week, and he said that he liked Hitler. And when you make Alex Jones sound like the reasonable person, yeah. you know we're in trouble. Yeah, you're not in a good place. You're not in a good place. No. And no. he went on and on and on about that, and I just. Also, for the record, I, uh, Hitler did not create highways or microphones. Oh, they looked it up? Highways existed before Hitler. <laughs> and even the Autobahn started in the 19th century. So the Autobahn was not something that Hitler started. And microphones have been around forever. Right. I was going to say microphones have been around since like the early 1900s. Right. So he didn't create other He said ones. that Hitler created the microphone? Yep. No, but the way he made it sound is that, like, Hitler right, like at he, a lab. Right, he was like, oh, my lab with the microphone. Right? Yeah. Um, okay, I don't... I mean, he was on Alex Jones, which that in itself is a problem. I just... I don't understand. I mean, I, I feel that he's not going to get any more mainstream platforms. So the platforms he's going to have gonna to have go to go, fringe. yeah. Or Twitter. <laughs> well, well, but but like Alex Jones, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Has he been reinstated on Twitter? I don't think he has. I'm sure it's a matter of time before Elon Musk is just like, yeah, but, but this dumpster fire needs gasoline. Right, but Let this me bring is to another level. Uh, I, you know what? Elon Musk is such a garbage human. I wouldn't doubt it. We're not liking Elon anymore. I mean, I don't think I ever really liked Elon Musk. I give him credit for I'm what not he's... returning my Tesla. I'm sorry. I... <laughs> I mean, I give him credit for being an innovator, but, you know, just because you're an innovator doesn't mean you know everything. Well, he didn't create te – well, Tesla is a very old company from the early 1900s. He was not the one who created the Tesla, the car. I'm not saying he's he did. He's just a CEO. <laughs> but I'm saying he he, he recognizes innovation. Right, he, you right. know, and that. And no, that. you can't take that away from him. Right, but that doesn't mean that you know everything. And – you know, again, proof is the dumpster fire that has become Twitter in the last three I weeks. just think that he... he Elon Musk. Elon Musk, okay. He was going down a path that was pretty good. You know, people really looked up to him. You know, he was controversial here and there, but nothing like he is now. Right. And he he's a just, professional troll. He just... Yeah, he took this, like, left turn... And he's a troll, and now it's about hablando sandese yeah. on Twitter. It's like, did you really need to do that? Like, did you need this type how, of how bored were you? This type of no, like to be this notorious, like 
Just go to Mars and propagate life over there. I don't know. I, 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 did he really need that? Pero bueno, back to back Kanye, to Kanye. Eh, I don't know. That is something to tan fema. You know, uh, you know what? Okay, yes, but no. He doesn't make any sense when he talks. Fair enough, but that's only. But you know what? I know a lot of people who aren't well in the head, and they're not racist. They're not coming out against the Jews. Oh. Okay, like oh, oh, right. yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. what I mean. Like that argument's only going to go so far right. with no, me no, 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 no. because there's lots of people who aren't right in the head and they're not being anti-Semitic. Right. No, no, that's like people who get drunk and they're like, "Oh, I'm sorry for my racist, homophobic, you right. know, it's like anti-Semitic remarks." I was like, drunk. I'm right. Like, I've never said that when I've been drunk. Right. Right. Um, no, but like in, in terms of a totality of it, it's not bien. You know, just the way he speaks, even about his racist, anti-Semit stuff. Oh, really? okay. Like, because I've only read them; I haven't heard. No, them. just watch any interview that he's done. Oh yeah, it, it's just it, rambling. It's just rambling, and then it be so like and it's like, wow. It, I I don't know. I mean, look, there's a part of me that still believes that this is a pub, not a publicity stunt, but that he he knows he's gonna get attention and press. Of course. Well, that of course, yeah. Um. So I, I don't know I don't know I don't know what Do I don't you know think okay this will I don't end know well well that's where I was going what I would love to know is what is his end game mm-hmm. what's his end game because you're saying all these outrageous things okay now okay, what so it's your end game because he he got dropped by everybody right even his agency right his music career is done. Right? They're not booking him for concerts. Right. So what's his end game? Right. What was the point? Go on drink champs. Uh, Adidas cannot drop me. I could say whatever I want and they can't drop me. Well. And Adidas dropped his ass. Adidas dropped you, baby. Yeah. So what's his end, end game? Like, what are we... Is he, like, doing a documentary? Is this some type of, like... Like, like Joaquin Phoenix? Yes, Joaquin <laughs> Phoenix. That's exactly where I was going. Joaquin Phoenix. Like, let me be a, Man. Ra- let me be a racist asshole for a year and see how that goes. Uh, listen, nowadays, if you're a musician, you don't need to do that. You can do your own documentary. Every, yeah. every musician has a documentary now. Yeah. Ask Demi Lovato. <laughs> Demi Lovato has 12. <laughs> Selena Gomez just released one. Lizzo just released one. Uh, Maluma has one. Maluma po- has one? On Amazon. Uh, Post Malone has Lady one. Gaga has one. What is it called? Three foot nine or something? Yeah, shit five like foot that? nine or, or yeah, exactly four foot nine. Um, yeah, so you don't have to do all this if that if that's what you wanted. Yay! Like literally, Netflix will give you money <laughs> to make one. Yeah. Like you just have to ask. <laughs> you know, I can't believe I'm gonna say what I'm about to say. Are you about to side with the Kardashians? I sort of feel bad for her. I I really do. Because I wonder if all of this is just because, like, you know, she just won her case and maybe she had Jewish lawyers. <laughs> she she didn't bargain for this bullshit. Nobody could have seen this coming. <laughs> yeah, like, Nobody could have seen this you coming. Could have, you could have said a lot of things about Kanye. But maybe not, he would have cheated on her. Or what, but all this? Cannon, but not. No. This is the same guy who said George Bush hates black people. Right. And that seems quaint now. That seems very like <laughs> garden variety. That seems like you know, ladies who lunch, like <laughs> type of scenario. Yes. George Bush doesn't. Care. You know what I think is the funniest thing about that statement is that he said it next to Mike, Mike Myers, Mike. and Mike Myers was like I don't off know. script. It's like I don't know what to do. Yeah. Like you're talking about Mike Myers, you know, the king of Adlib. You know, it's like what are you? <laughs> I've told you. It's like if that. Okay. Remember when Heather Locklear. Um, hosted SNL. Yeah, that they did the inf- the, the infomercial skit, yeah. and her her she's the host, yeah. and she just becomes very anti-Semitic. And yeah. Mike Myers is playing the the co-host, and he's like very like, I don't know what to do. Okay, that sc- that skit came to life that day with Kanye. Yeah, and now it's coming to life with Kanye again. <laughs> yeah, it's, I don't I don't know what his end goal is. I just hope this doesn't I mean, end look, bad. I hope it, this doesn't look, end badly he, because he's speaking bad about the Jews. He said that Hitler, <laughs> he likes he Hitler. likes Hitler. If he starts trashing Beyonce, that's it. Oh no! If the Beehive goes after him, oh no! <laughs> oh man! If he trashes Beyonce, and Taylor Swift, yeah, don't do well, it. Well, 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 Taylor don't Swift. Do it. Well, the Swifties already, you know, have him. That's on true. His... He's already on the radar with them. Yeah. So if now the Beehive is on it, don't do it, yay! Don't it, do don't it. Do it. I'm not trying to defend you, but I'm just trying to give you a fair it's not of, end well for a you. fair amount of warning. It does not end well. That scenario does not end with you surviving. 
the beehive and the Swifties are gonna get together and be like, "That what is it? The enemy of my enemy is my is my enemy exactly." <laughs> wow, can you imagine? You thought Twitter was a dumpster fire now. You know what? And it, no, seriously, I that's something I thought about for a while because him and Jay Z were very close at yeah, one yeah, point, yeah. and he's throwing little shots at Jay Z every every year. But he's throwing right shots now. at everybody. At but this he point. hasn't a Beyonce, right? <laughs> So I'm like, este un día, if he wakes up on the wrong side of the bed, I think, well, well, he, he, you know he what kind I, of is already. You know what I think it is? I think in a weird way, he's, it's like he's being respectful of of, I, of a woman. I don't know. I, I, I know. The, I know. I'm trying to find logic with, with I'm trying you're, to find logic. You're trying with to find logic you. where there's no logic. Where there is no logic. I know. I know. My bad. My bad. So listeners, have you started Christmas shopping? Have you started? I'm almost done. <laughs> I'm almost done, You're but for so those of, but for those of you who have not done your Christmas shopping or are looking for something unique, tpublic.com and look up Pero Let Me Tell You. We have a shop there with T-shirts. <laughs> wow, <Yeah>. wow! <laughs> Listen, we gotta promote the merch. You're becoming what I don't like about other podcasts. <laughs> Listen, we gotta promote the merch. All right, you know what? We're creating this stuff. Somebody's gotta buy it, and who better than our listeners? If it down, if it down. <laughs> you know, we're not putting it up there for our health. We're putting it up there so that people can enjoy. Ay, los abuelitos tan caro. How much are they? Because I have one of the artificial. Oh, see, the other day I went to Home Depot. Y un gajo ahí was $125. Un gajo. I'm mm, like, this that... is just a little bit bigger than the Charlie Brown Christmas tree. Pero that, that... Are we having another shortage of trees like that year? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's a shortage this year. I haven't heard. There's a shortage of everything. Of else, everything else. You know, Why not? Like, are, there ch- are there just still a shortage of those chips? The oh, chips. For... The chips that ran everything? I or you think of like that. waffles <laughs> and glaze? potato chips. <laughs> I was like, I bought chips the other day. I don't think there was a shortage. <laughs> no, I don't think there's um, like the microchips. No, um, because yeah, that was a problem for us with, with my day job for a little while there. For a couple months, it was like, um, we're very low on inventory of devices. We're very low on inventory of devices. And we don't know when we're getting more. We don't know when we're getting more. But I don't know. We seem to be getting more now. Or now for, everything's good. Now everything's fine. We're, we're better now. Yeah. We're all good. Um, it's all good. But oh, yeah, really? $125? For un abuelito? Yeah. But, but, well, but un gajo. <laughs> <laughs> well, get on it. It's already the first weekend of April. Uh, of April. Of December. No, I'm going to I'm gonna put it on probably tomorrow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So I got to go find. I, I go to like five or six different places. You, you like comparison? Yeah, I need Fraser for Oh, you get a okay. Yes, I need Fraser or Balsam. Oh, so specific. Yeah, I don't. I, I couldn't tell you. I don't get. You know the difference in Christmas trees? No. I don't. Oh. Well, I've been. I've had an, a fake tree for the last like ten years. Okay, I'm gonna give the easy one. El abuelito que te pincha. Yes. Versus the one que no te pincha. Okay. Right. Right. Yes. Well, I don't get the one que te pincha. Right. Okay. I don't either. I don't like them. Okay. ¿Cuál es ese? That's a uh, spruce. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't like those. And also, they... Um, I mean, I've, I've bought those before. Oh, but the, mean, the branches aren't as good. Like, Well, the leaves... The, the, the needles come off very yeah, quick. And yeah, and my, my, my branch to, like, needle ratio has to be on point. So, that's something I look for, too. I do not like bottom-heavy trees... Ain't nothing wrong with being bottom heavy. I I'm very particular with the type of tree that I want, and I want it nine feet. Why nine feet? Because I like a tall Christmas tree. Okay. And then you know you know the thing with the Christmas tree. Okay, you want to talk about false advertising? <laughs> I that's true. The stem. Right. The, no, the, but the, they'll be like, "This is a nine foot tree." And, and I'm then like, I'm like, right, because the top of the tree that that stem that goes straight up that you put the star on is right. like two feet. Right. So right? and then you got to chop the bottom a little bit too. Right. And then you're gonna cut that off. Yeah. Right, so now your nine foot tree is really like a five and a half foot tree, <laughs> right? So don't come with me to those lies. You know what? Get that. Call Amanda Ramirez. <laughs> get her lawyer. So yeah, I'm gonna go Christmas tree uh, shopping this year. I took Tristan like two years, uh, twice Christmas mm-hmm. shopping, tree shopping, mm-hmm. and I was like, nope, we're not doing it again. Why not? Again. Because Tristan wants like the one with the foam, the the spray, the spray in different colors. I'm like, no. He's a kid. Is that really cool? I'm like, we're not going to do that. He's a kid. Like, yeah, he's a that's kid. why well, he wants that uh, yeah, one. Okay, he's well, a child. We're not getting that. Well, I didn't say you're getting it, but that's why he wants we're it. We're not getting that. Kids so. want the fun, you know, the colorful, all the, yeah. the, the, the things, bells and whistles. 
Do you like putting up the tree? Well, but your tree is... My tree is what? Your tree's small. My tree's like like five feet, six feet. Y lo tuyo apenas tiene decorations. Uh, no, I am not our friend. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of fake trees, have you seen the price of fake trees? No. They're like $700. Okay. Like, I'm not kidding. Wait, are you buying it from, like, that thing that advertises that on Home TV? Depot. At Home Depot, the other day, I went to Home Depot. Uh. I don't like fake trees. I'm just going to put it out there. I don't like fa- I don't like fake trees, and I'm sorry if I'm offending some listeners. I don't care how real you think your tree looks. It doesn't. Mine doesn't look real, but the reason I have a fake tree is because I bought it my first year up in New York, and I was like, I'm not going to lug una bolito de, de verdad up the elevator, up the stairs, and then I'm not here. No, no, no. So I just... I don't like fake no. trees. No. Nope. I like getting a real tree. I like the house smelling, like... Christmas tree like for pine, like yeah. two hours. Um, <laughs> I I like a real tree. Um, and you know the the thing with a fake Christmas tree, it's especially if I, you want a big one. Right. Es que, I don't know how to put it That's true. The the way, in the ass, during yeah. the year, yeah. and then it'll be at the jode. Yeah, that's only good for like two years, really. That's like you know what I always thought was a not very bright idea. People that would buy the Christmas tree that was pre lit, and I'm like, what are you gonna do the day the Christmas lights break? Because they will. I didn't buy one that was pre-lit. Right. That's what I told my parents. I'm like, no compres el abuelito con las luces, que cuando las luces se, se, se fundan... Te jodiste. Te jodiste. No, pero esas luces... Uh, How long did it, it last? Matter. How long? No, it lasted a few years. Oh, okay, okay, it, okay. It, 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 it did last a few years. But like two years ago, they did get rid of it, and the tree was fine, because the lights right. were had died. Yeah, yeah. And then they tried putting lights on it, but it just didn't look right. Because uh, it was like lights upon lights. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Right? So, um, I'm sorry if I offended anybody with the fake Christmas tree thing, but... Um, you're not sorry. No, I'm not. <laughs> you're not. I know I you're not. sorry, not sorry. No. <laughs> All right, Demi. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I like, I like the Christmas tree. It's so funny because now I'm thinking of like my mom in the 90s was like... Whatever. She's so different now. She would do like these. I, I feel this was very in in the nineties. Do like these designer Christmas trees. What do you mean? Like there was a year that was like all burgundy with birds. With like, oh, my mother! My mother! I think my mother still does that to this yeah. day. Like yeah, with like birds. Yeah, like you know? she'll she'll get like a two color motif and right. yeah yeah yeah. And then yeah. a few other years it was just gold. Yeah. And then there was another year that it was like pink with like little lace bullshit and like all that type of stuff. And I'm like. Whatever, mom. Can we just have like a regular Christmas tree? <laughs> like my mom does that still to with this like year. different colors and all that. I think Christmas trees should be festive. Yeah, you know, yeah. like I, I, those trees look very pretty, very beautiful, all of that. But give me a tree that's got like multicolored bowls so and you know really ornaments and all that. With the tree, in terms of decorating the tree, the lights. In so okay. far that I do not like when all the lights are flashing. So what I do is. So you, you keep it. I get one strand okay. of maybe, I don't know, maybe 100 okay. or 150. And that strand is the one that I sort of wrap around the trunk that I put it in really deep into the mm-hmm. tree. And that strand I'll put flashing or twinkling. Okay. And then the rest that it's I put steady. the rest are solid. Huh. So then there's a little twinkle. Okay, right? okay. But these these ones that's like half of the Christmas trees turned off, the other half is well, lit. Well, that's the problem is that if you can do it, like if you can coordinate it, it looks pretty. Most people cannot. They can't. Most so people it's like, cannot. Oh, the top right. of your Christmas trees turned off for like two seconds. Right. Like, and then the bottom one turns off. And then, yeah, and then you, then you have epilepsy. Right. So it's like, no, yeah. you mix it. Yes. You mix it. That's a little trick. I, I told you, you the other you, how to do the, the... You and your holiday hacks. My holiday hacks. You, Dar- Darian's holiday hacks. Oh, my God. Speaking of holiday hacks, listeners, listeners, you got to do this. You have to do this. You will thank me. Okay. Do you want your house to smell like the holidays? Yes, smell we Smell like do. the holidays, they say. <laughs> this is all I have to do. It can't be done. Okay. Get a pot of water okay. and a nice, like, saucepan. Okay. Start boiling that water. Okay. Put in... Boil it? Boiling. Plain. plain. Okay. A cup of cranberries... Oh, you posted this the other Fresh day. cranberries. Get an orange and slice the orange. Okay. And then get like three or four sticks of cinnamon. Mm-hmm. You will thank me later. It's like, oh my God, it feels like I'm up north. It's a holiday scent. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. It's funny because I did it at my parents' house when um, on Thanksgiving. And the turkey. So what is it? It's cinnamon, orange, and get- cranberries. Cranberries. 
of boiling water. It's the turkey. Uh, the turkey doesn't... I don't do the turkey with bacon anymore. Well, my grandmother used to. So th the turkey doesn't really emit that much s smell as it did when it had bacon. And I just put salt and pepper on the turkey. Right. So it doesn't have a lot of like spice mm -hmm. or aromatics to really... Right, right, you know. right. Um so so funny because I was doing that at my parents' house as I was cooking, you know, throughout the day, and then my dad starts making un pernil because we have to because work, how 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 right, and I'm like, wow, this is so this is such the embodiment of being Cuban American, <laughs> <laughs> you know, spice spice, you know, holiday spice, right, con pernil as it is, con una chuleta, una digo una una pierna de puerco, una pierna de puerco, this is it. This is Miami. I think you should. If you could have taken a picture of the scent, yeah, it would have like we could have bought. We could have sent it to Albisa. Yeah, I, that'd be a great one. <laughs> pernil, pernil. Well, she has one that's called Nochebuena. Yeah, I haven't smelled that one. It does not smell like lechon. Mm. It smells nice. I smelled it at La Tiendecita the other day, but it is not the scent of uh, you know morals and the lechon. The other day, actually, I was at the CVS in. Um, and hi, Aliyah, but they have this in all CVSs. And I just, I actually, I, I wanted to post this on our page. I wanted, um, I took a picture of it because it was amazing. It, it was like, you know, the Cuban stuff. Mm -hmm. So on the one shelf, on the top shelf, they had Agustin Reyes. Okay. And La Colonia. Right. And I have to tell you that I even bought the Agustin Reyes. So I use the Agustin Reyes now as like um, like air freshener yeah, yeah. As, uh, like febreze febreze yeah, yeah like uh why am i can't think of the word uh sheets a uh, sheet spray uh, dryer uh, oh my put god it over my bed um, uh, linen spray thank you there we go wow <laughs> i'm very tired listeners i am linen spray right yeah. but to me the routine ray the real one is the one that comes in the box without the spray Ese que se daba el regalo. Yeah, because you have to like tilt the bottle. Yes. Right. It's and like it, a colonia. It's a nice yes. little box and all that. But I do have the other one as a linen spray. So under that, they hmm. had the para mi bebe. Okay. The shelf under. Okay. Eh, I don't think para so mi far bebe so on brand. Does, I don't think para mi bebe does it anymore. But their their bo their bottle caps. You still have una maruga. Yeah. That's like a little thing. Yeah. Do they still have it? Oh, I don't know. Like that. Right. So under that they have para mi bebe, and then under para mi bebe. They had, of course, the one and only, close to my heart, Minta de Perales. Oh, my gosh. This was like like, and then, like all the hits. And then under that, they had Agua Florida. I mean. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Tell me you're in Miami without telling me you're in Miami. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's what I'm going to say when I post it. That's Because right? <laughs> I took a picture of it. That is wonderful. Because this is the type of stuff that I see and I'm like, imagine if they had that in like, Nebraska. Yeah. They would probably be like, who's who's Augustin Reyes? Yeah, who's Augustin Reyes? <laughs> no, you know what I love? We Power me, baby. We, we've spoken about this several who's times. Who's BB? How, like, los americanos are like, you put cologne on your baby? Hells, damn, we do. But si <laughs> see, I... We I bathe the baby. But see, I remember watching sitcoms, and, you know, if any sitcom had, like, a younger girl, that one episode where they get their ears pierced, and I always remember being like, e? Yeah. My my sister's had her ears pierced since I right. can remember, but the cologne thing. You, yeah, you put cologne on your baby. I'm like, oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and you don't. And that's and, the problem. That's the problem. <laughs> that's why your child smells like spit, <laughs> <laughs> and ours smells like violeta rusa. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Russian. Who violets. doesn't love a Russian violet? <laughs> Although maybe right now we're not a big fan of Russian violets, but what you know are Russian violets. But violeta rusa were these violetas that were. <laughs> <laughs> like imported from, like from the Cossacks, <laughs> yeah, eh, eh, from Russia. Porque las cosas rusas en Cuba no eran buenas. That's true, and yet this is. I guess this lived on. This lived on. You're absolutely. When you were that, like everything, yeah, everything was like eso, eso ruso. Yeah, I never stopped to think about that. You know, I, I honestly, I would love to know a little bit more about the history of Agustín Reyes. I'm sure somebody out there can help us yeah. with that. Be listeners, if you know anybody yeah. who knows the history of Agustin Reyes, because because God knows you listeners have helped us out before. <laughs> so, no, and I feel that the fact that their packaging has never changed, there's something there. Yeah, there, th that is on purpose. There's a tradition. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, that yeah, is yeah. on purpose. Because even Mita de Perales has changed their yeah. their um their logo and their design. Yeah, completely. Mm -hmm. Mita looks younger now than ever. She's not, is she still on the bottle? 
The ones that I saw there, they don't. But the thing with Mita de Perales is that yeah, not, it became more logo focused. In all locations, they don't have all the products. The right, but, I, but the, the new look and feel of, of the yeah. products is much more logo focused yes. than her. Yes. You know, it's like a hot commodity now. Un cepillo de Mita de Perales. What do you mean? Because her cepillos were amazing. They don't eso make no, anymore? Eso no te partía el pelo. They, they era bueno para el cuero cabelludo. But, <laughs> but they don't make them anymore? They don't. Oh. What's okay, a chico okay. pinta? Always a chico pinta. That's true. You yeah. never you never lose that. That's inside. Yeah. Um. Eh, yeah. They, her products actually were really good. Her products are still very expensive. Really? Yeah. In fact, I have here in the picture that I took. Um. Damn it. A bottle of her shampoo is ten forty nine. Coño. Yeah, it's it's not cheap. Her 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 products have never been. cheap. They've never been cheap. They've never they've never been cheap. That much I I know. But shit, I miss the cinco minutos cinco minutos de mitas de perales. You know I can't find it on YouTube. So for the, for you listeners who don't know, some of you will know and some of you don't. So Minta de Perales was this um, hairdresser in Cuba. She was very famous in Cuba. She had a line of or a chain of um, uh, salons and what have you. So obviously uh, when she left Cuba, she uh, opened up her brand here in, in the U.S. And she was headquartered in Miami. And um, she had a very large line of of products of hair products and um, my father actually worked for her for several years so i got to know her and her family but she's like an icon yeah in like yeah. old school cuban you know see in the uh, miami cuban community yeah 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 she and, and again very known in terms of like the cuban diaspora and um she in the 80s and even 90s she had what was called cinco minuto de comita de perales which was like a little like five minute infomercial yeah in between shows where she would come out and she would give tips for your hair you know what to do what not to do how to brush it what not to brush it and that's very of the time yeah. of a time and place i don't know if they aired that around the country maybe in new jersey uh, maybe and <laughs> i could see that in jersey maybe new york yeah like east coast east, coast, east coast for sure yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that yeah. didn't yeah. make it to the west coast yeah she's like the cuban vidal sassoon <laughs> yes. Alberto Bio Five. Yes, Alberto Bio Do people still do those treatments? The hot oil. The treatments? hot oil treatments. I never did those because I did the oil <laughs> treatment to Mita Verale. <laughs> I always wondered, like, because I always remember just people in the commercials for the Vo Five, like throwing that little botellita in like a thing of water, and then it would yeah. like steam up. Yeah, I, I feel didn't that know what it did. Named shampoos aren't big anymore. But where's Paul Mitchell? That's true. Where's Helene Curtis? Yeah, where is she? <laughs> where's Mita de Perales? Where, well, we know where Mita de Perales right? is. But like all these shampoos that were like... That's true. By you, don't, you don't have... Like now you have like herbal essence. Yeah. Well, you've had that for a while. Pantene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny because the other day... Um, so Tristan goes through like a bottle of shampoo every two days. So, <laughs> oh my God. So, uh, Is he washing the dog? So that's why we only get them at the dollar store. Got it. But the other day, jodio tanto, and he I was like, I need shampoo, I need shampoo. Now we were in Publix or something, and I got him Pert Plus. Okay. And I have to tell you, for me, Pert Plus was a shampoo of the early 90s. Oh, for sure. Right? And when I smelled that, I was like, oh back. my God. I was like, I'm 14. It took you back right away. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's like I've said it in the late '80s, early '90s. What was in was finesse. Yes. Oh my god, I totally forgot about finesse. Finesse. Yeah. And then Pert Plus. Yeah. And then like in the mid '90s, it was, that's when Herbal Essence came out. Yes, with and those was, with those ladies having orgasms in the right, airplane. Right. That was like a big deal, and you know. I'm trying to think of all the other ones. I feel like there hasn't been like a new shampoo. I remember when Pantene came out. That's what I'm saying. We I were like kids, but I remember. We have not had like a new like Bonstani. like a real new shampoo brand like make an impact. <laughs> we're talking about shampoo, <laughs> but let me tell you. Uh, which is probably how we know it's time to start wrapping it up. Don't you love shampoo? I guess. I never I didn't You know that podcast you were in a few a few weeks ago? A, a bald and bingeable? Yes, that he asked you what is your yeah, like, beauty product beauty yeah, regimen yeah. and you were like, uh I knew I, I know you so well that I was like, I know what he, he's not gonna say anything. It's funny because I I told you when you were answering those questions, <laughs> I was like speaking out loud. I'm like, This is what's going on with Nicki Minaj <laughs> and you don't know. 
<laughs> but anyway, because Ish was in a podcast a yes, few weeks uh, ago. Bald and bingeable with, uh, with uh, Angelo. It, it, was, it was fun. It was, it was fun. fun and he asked him some really off the wall questions that were kind of random but fun. Yeah. But I know this guy and I know when he's <laughs> what he's going to answer. And um, when he asked him, oh, do you have a beauty regimen? He, I knew what your answer was going to be like, no, I don't. Because I, I, right? don't, I don't have the discipline for that. Right. So I was kind of like. Thinking how I would have answered that, right. and my answer to that would have... I don't have a beauty regimen, right. like, in terms of, like, skincare. Right. What I am, very bougie on a shampoo. Right, but that's the thing. is, you know I'm not... I, like, I, I'm not bougie on shampoo. I really don't have, like... I'm not one of these people who puts on lotion or anything like that. So I didn't... I went with... I said pre-workout yeah. was, like, my my beauty thing. I'm so bougie on shampoo that I look at the ingredients. Oh. No paraffins. <laughs> Parafina va pelo lo peor. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. I've told you, I'm protecting the hair. Like, that I've, you have made it that's very... That's the one thing that I'm very bougie You on. have made it abundantly I don't clear. have. I don't get dollar store. Although, and listeners, you might want to know this. So, paraffins and like ammonia and um, a lot of different chemicals, obviously. There, there, there are certain chemicals that you don't want for your hair. Right. You know what shampoo actually has none of those chemicals? It will surprise you. Um, okay, wait. It's actually when they make a list of shampoos that are like safe for your hair, mm-hmm. it's always on there. Is Suave. Really? Suave. Which is like, again, do- like dollar store yes. shampoo. They don't have none of those chemicals. So it's good for your hair. It is actually good for your hair. Wow. And Suave has a, a, a line that has like a rosemary mint mm-hmm. smell, mm-hmm. which is. It is made by the same people who make Avita. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's the same exact shampoo. It's just in a different bottling. I do my research. Mira, yeah. <laughs> right. Things I do not know about. <laughs> nay, nay. That's like the best, the best thing for your, for your scalp is tea tree. That I do know. Yeah. That I do know. And I love tea tree oil shampoos. They smell yeah. really nice. Are you one of these guys that you buy one of those... Body wash, no, face I, no, wash, no, 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 bullshit. No, because I the body wash that I use is like the one that is um for like it's like the clean and clear uh-huh. like Mandy Moore or whatever. Yeah, I'm use Axe. And then <laughs> I like how Axe smells, but it doesn't do anything. Um, and then for shampoo, I use like Head and Shoulders. Okay, then You use Head and Shoulders? <laughs> well, no, I don't want Capas. How disappointing. Well, you don't care about your hair. So. I don't. <laughs> but I saw you sell some blue. Do they still make that? Yeah, they do. Actually, you know what dandruff shampoo I kind of like? I mean, we're talking about dandruff shampoo. <laughs> um, but oh, let me tell you, I sort of like how it smells. Because I I, I don't have dandruff on like a chronic. Right, 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 right. On a daily basis. Right. But I have had bouts of dandruff. Well, yes, yes. So I've gotten like the tea gel. Mm-hmm. I sort of like that tar smell. Oh, that's, yeah. that's, that's pretty potent. The tea gel? Yeah. Yeah. And then there's Denorex. No, Denorex is when it's like listen. Denorex yeah. when it gets into your happy bits. That de- Denorex is your de- dirty bits. Denor Denorex is Defcon Five. Yeah, Denorex is like having that entire bot thing of uh, <laughs> icebreakers and then water. You know, we talked on about your taint. The of the episode. Okay, do we have to get such a dirty word in there? Taint is not a dirty okay, word. Can we like not say that word again? Like, but it's not a dirty word. But let's not say that word. Let's move on to our last soda, shall we? <laughs> let's move right along move right along let's keep it going let's get to our last soda well you've reached that point of the episode listen i was a little tired at the beginning of this episode this <laughs> and now you're awake me up. Oye, mi gente, Ish here, and with the holidays happening, we all know that we're about to get caught up in tremendo corre corre. But that doesn't mean you can't enjoy something delicious while running holiday errands. There's only one solution for awesome Cuban food that's fast. Uh huh. You know we're talking about Cuban guys' restaurants. With five locations in South Florida, yeah, even one in Broward, there's no excuse to eat anything else when you're out and about. Beyond exhausted after Black Friday shopping all morning, swing by a Cuban guys for pan con tortilla y por supuesto un ca- Cafe con leche. Hungry after waiting in line for hours to pick up a lechon? Have some Cuban guys fritas and un batido. The kids están jodiendo on the way to Tia Gloria's house? Pop in and grab a guanito sandwich for them while you enjoy the Cuban guys sandwich. Cuban guys restaurants lo tiene todo and you can dine in or order ahead for pickup or delivery. Así que visit cubanguysrestaurants.com to find the nearest location and start enjoying the awesome Cuban food you deserve this holiday season. Pero 
your so way. it's soda time, everybody. Yeah, we're we're moving right along. So my soda is short and sweet. It's more of a get well soda. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I was gonna say Tyler Perry. What? <laughs> Tyler Perry. It's a. Uh, <laughs> it's decidedly not Wait, who's, Tyler Perry. Who's, Pi- who's Parker Perry? Parker Perry? No, Parker Posey. Wait, who's Parker? Is Parker Posey that person in that new movie with Robert Patton's? No, wait, hold on. With the theme. Oh my God, I would say Frankie Vales. With, um, <laughs> a Chico Watermelon Sugar High. A Harry Styles. Harry Styles and no. Olivia Pope. and <laughs> No, okay, Olivia Wilde? <laughs> He's creating new movies as we speak. He's just casting them. I'm casting fictional characters. Ca- in movies that don't exist. Like, it's wonderful. I think you need the caffeine. So do you want to go first with your last soda? Or do you want to finish your I'm, last soda? I'm going to send a get well soda to Al Roker. Yes, 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 yes. So Al Roker from the Today Show, he's actually been really ill. And he uh, was hospitalized this week. Yeah. I think he had blood clots or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. He, he, you know, he's not doing too well. So I just wanted a, la- a little recognition to him. I watched the Today Show. Yes. And I feel that Al Roker... It's, it's funny because Al Roker has had a very interesting trajectory in terms of his career. You know, he was a weather person. Yeah. yeah. By trade, yeah. He uh, He's a meteorologist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Um, and he took over for Willard Scott. And... Um, you know, that's what he did for a long time. And then he sort of started doing a little bit of news and being an anchor. But now in the Today Show, I feel that Al Roker is such a like... Personality. Personality yeah. and so positive And it's just sunshine and rainbows, literally, <laughs> that he talks about. Um, but, you know, he's, he's a good good energy. Yes, good vibe. yes, for sure. So, for sure. Uh, soda to last. To, mm-hmm. A last soda to Al Roker. Yes. So, uh, speaking of rainbows, I'm going to give my last soda to someone who I don't know his name. <laughs> But I'm pretty sure that he must have uh, taken one of Thalia's, you know, how to cram a lot into the moment you have seminars. Because I'm going to give it to the gentleman at the World Cup who ran onto the pitch waving a pride flag with a shirt that said, respect for Iranian women and save Ukraine. Because he was like, I got one shot. I'm going to just, let's do everything. Like, you got to lose yourself. Yes. The moment you <laughs> exactly. It, Speking you of Eminem, you know, you only get one shot. And this guy was like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. I may not make it out of Qatar alive. But damn it, this is going to make the rounds. And you know what? Kudos to him for for having the balls to just get out there on that on that pitch and, and make that statement. So. Have you been watching the World Cup? I have not. Ole, ole, ole. I have not. I, I have not watched this World Cup at all. Funny, For I, no political reason. I just... was talking to somebody the other day that I was like, oh, you know, I don't really watch the World Cup or I'll watch here and there. And I said something like, oh, I remember when Ricky Martin performed the Cup of Life in 1998. And he's like, what song is that? And I was like, never mind. <sighs> this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> like, how do you not know the Cup of Life? Was this somebody who was more or less our age? Or... No. Do you <laughs> know Waka Waka? I know of it. I I I I can't tell you that I know the words. Is what I'm saying. Uh, the Shakira song. Oh wait, I do know. It's time for Africa. Africa. Yes. I Shakira. Shakira's not having a good year. No, no. She should just pay her taxes. Well, first the issue with her husband. <laughs> oh yeah. And then you know. And then the whole taxes. You know what I call him? I call him. What's the name of the French Grey Goose people? The French Grey Goose the, the people. The people made Grey Goose. Uh, the company? Yes. Pernod Ricard. Pernod Ricard, yes. Right, that's what I call him. <laughs> <laughs> As one does. Pero eso comunita, because they brought out Havana Club Rum. The es communist verdad. one. Es verdad. So that you know you you wanna you wanna you wanna go on that that bandwagon of calling people comunista. Esos son comunistas. Esos sí son comunistas. The real Havana, the real Havana club es is the one that Bacardi makes. Yes. So and that's why Gio's our guy. That's anyway, right. we hope you listened, laughed, and learned. I right, today's episode was I, I was kind of like lagging in the beginning. Today, today was so, all over the place. So, so I apologize, yeah. listeners. You win some, you lose some. You know what? We're entertaining either way. Yeah. 
So <laughs> we hope you listened, laughed, and learned. And as always, remember to grab your pastelito, your croqueta. Join us at Croqueta. Yes, Croqueta Palooza, yes. Um, and your cafecito. And thank you so much. Only two episodes left. Yes. Two episodes left yes, of season yes, yes. five. So have a great weekend, everybody. All right, cuídense, mi gente. Bye. Pero Let Me Tell You is co-hosted by Darian Borges and Ismaeliano, produced by Ismaeliano, and our theme, Pero Let Me Tell You Freestyle, is composed by Michael Angelo Lomlaplex, the official gay guy. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. <laughs>